Okay, welcome to episode three on our setup basics series. Um, this one we're going to look at responsiveness, which is the uh, basically the overall stiffness of the chassis. So how quickly it will respond to uh, changes in uh, direction or bumps or anything else that's uh, asked of it suspension-wise. So let's get started. Switch over to RC Crew Chief here. So we are starting with <clears throat> the same setup that we had last time with the uh, weight transfer balance. Uh, so it has the same roll center heights. The uh, handling is very well balanced front to rear. So what we're going to do here is we're going to assume that we're going to a bumpier track or a lower grip track or something of that nature where we need to soften the overall uh, uh, response of the chassis in order to get more roll into it. Um, so here's what we're going to try and do is when in doing all this we want to maintain our uh, uh, weight transfer balance. So you can see here that we're sitting at uh, about 48.76 uh, uh, the roll couple and our roll sensitivity is 0.98. So we are going to try and increase the roll sensitivity which is essentially softening the chassis. Uh, before we do that I want to just take a quick uh, side trip here and look at this number for different chassis. So let's go and we're going to start with a real stiff one. So we're going to go to uh, Capricorn C801, which is a 1 8 scale on road car. So here is the setup, default setup for that car. And you can see our roll sensitivity is 0.29 degrees per G. So very, very stiff. Reason for that being that this kind of car runs on very smooth tracks and also <clears throat> excuse me has very hard tires uh, so the tire carcass does not form very much so you want to uh, try and keep your your camber angles and your chassis roll to a minimum so there's the uh, c801 so now let's go to the opposite extreme let's go to a uh, 1 8 scale Truggy. So let's look at the MBX 6T and we'll go to the setup here. So now you can see the roll sensitivity is an order of magnitude softer in the uh, Truggy than it is in the 1 8 scale um, on road car. So very different. Uh, this vehicle is obviously going and dealing with lots of bumps and jumps, and so you need a very soft, compliant. Um, suspension to handle that. The tires are also much much softer as I'm sure we've all seen with the balloons that they create when you pull the trigger with the wheels up. So I just wanted to illustrate that. So this number basically the smoother the track, the harder the tires, the lower you want this number. The bumpier the track, the softer the tires, the higher this number will go. So let's go back to our 417 mix here. And get our roll center set up. Okay, so essentially there are three things that you can do to change the roll sensitivity. You can if we want to stiffen it, you could raise or lower the, uh, sorry, step back for a second. If you want to soften the roll sensitivity, you could raise the roll center or raise the center of gravity. You can soften the suspension. So you can go to a softer spring. You can lay your shocks down more. Uh, you can disconnect anti-roll bars. Uh, the other thing is the roll center heights. So if you want to go with a softer suspension, you want to lower your roll center. Uh, if you want a harder uh, setup, then you would raise the roll center. So first off, let's uh, have a look at what we would be able to do if we just changed our ride height. Because changing our ride height is going to change our center of gravity position. 
So I've got seven selected here. So let's just put in seven as our pride height. So you can see we raised our roll center, but we've also ra or raised our center of gravity, but we've also raised our roll center. So our roll sensitivity number really didn't change. You know, let's do the same in the rear. Let's bring it up to seven and a half millimeters. So you can see again, we raised our roll center along with our center of gravity height. So our overall chassis roll sensitivity really hasn't changed an awful lot. Let's just go back to our base setup and let's see what we can do to increase this number and soften the chassis. I'm going to do this on the handling page because it's a lot easier to see the effect of your changes uh, just looking at your neutral uh, power position. So first thing we can do, uh, we talked about uh, roll center heights. And keep in mind throughout this, what I'm going to be trying to achieve is I want to try and keep this balance. I don't want to affect this balance. I'm going to change the, the overall stiffness of the chassis, but this balance I want to keep the same. So let's look at the front. So we said uh, at the beginning that if we wanted to soften this, we could lower the roll center. So our first choice for lowering the roll center is to deal with our lower hinge pin. So let's lower that down. So we've dropped it by about a millimeter. And uh, let's go and move our upper camber link as far out and as high up as we can. And that's got our roll center down another millimeter. So we're at five and a half millimeters down. And that's about as far as we can go with the setup options that we've got with this uh, uh, suspension setup. So let's apply that. And now you can see that we have changed the balance of the car. We now have uh, uh, softened the front and the rear is the same. So we're going to be a little bit on the loose side. So we don't really want to do that. We want to maintain our balance. So let's go back in and adjust the rear and we'll do the same to the rear. So we want to get our rear roll center around five, five and a half. Notice I'm not talking anything about camber gain or any of those numbers here. Uh, we'll deal with that after what we're doing is affecting camber gain and that is also very important. So we're going to lower the inner hinge pin down. So that's got us down to 4.7. Not quite where we want to be. So let's go in and uh, raise up our inner. So that's a little too far. Let's raise this one up here. So, okay. So there we go. We're, we're pretty close. You go down to there, that's a little farther off. So we're pretty close. We're 5.8 on the rear and uh, 5.6 on the front, which is not far off. So let's apply that. And there we go. So now we've got our balance back, but we have increased our, or increased our roll sensitivity or softened the chassis. So what else can we do? Well, we could go and we can change springs. So let's, we're going softer. So let's go down one. And again, you can see our balance has changed, so let's do the same to the rear. Let's go down one in the rear, and our balance has returned. Uh, what else can we do? We can also change our anti-roll bars. So we're already at the soft one, so let's just disengage our rear anti-roll bar. Again, we've gone to... Uh, uh, now we're looking at a, a condition where we'd be slightly on the understeer side, push side. So let's just disengage the front. And that didn't work too good because we went a little too far. So now we've moved it from a understeer situation to an oversteer situation. So let's put that one back up and let's just go one softer on the, let's go down to the front soft bar. And there we go. We've got our handling balance back. So let's go ahead and save this and we'll go back and the, the setup page and uh, so we're going to create a new setup because I don't really want to overwrite the other one. So what we've got here is our same roll center and it's just appended a one to it. So let's just save that. So now you can see that we are, our chassis roll sensitivity is at 1.2. We were at 0.98. So that's about a 20% in or change in your in your um, uh, chassis overall chassis stiffness. So that's a fairly significant change, to say the least. The other thing that we should note is 
our camber gains have changed drastically. So our previous ones, we had about a quarter degree front and rear. Now we basically have none. So we'll talk more about this in the next episode, but just so that you're aware, uh, once you've made these changes, there may be more work to do because you have to look at everything as a, as a package. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to have a quick look at uh, some stuff on the dynamic tab that we that affects what we've done. Uh, first off, I'm just going to switch back to our, where our starting point was, and we're going to go over here and we're going to have a look at. This is the roll angle versus lateral G. So let's uh, crank this up a little bit. Let's go up to two Gs. Um, so here, the slope of this line, roll angle versus lateral G, is your roll sensitivity. So if I go here and click at, uh, if I try and get it around 1, so at 1G, it's 0.98 degrees, which is what our roll sensitivity is here. So now if we switch back to, let's switch to our second setup, our soft setup, and go back to the dynamic page, and at 1, we're 1.21 degrees, so very close. Um, the other thing that we want to pay attention to here, and we can see the effect of, is our camber angles. So you can see here this setup started with a static camber of one degree, minus one degree, and now at two G's, we are into the positive camber range. So that's probably not a real desirable. Thing because you're rolling onto the outside of the tire. If you uh, are trying to lose grip, then that might be a good thing, but it's probably not what you want to try and do on a, on a regular basis. So let's just see where we were at with our original setup. Go to the dynamics, and now let's see we're a little better, but still on the positive side. And the other thing to note is the range that we, our, um, our camber range out here has actually increased. So the difference between your camber on your outside wheel and inside wheel has increased. So let's see what we can do to try and trim that up a little bit. And the one thing that we haven't talked about in all the stuff so far is droop. So let's see what happens when we start adjusting droop. So if we put in two millimeters of droop in the front, let's just look at our roll angles. So now you can see we've got this kink in the curve. And the reason for the kink in the curve is when the inside wheel hits the droop limit, essentially the stiffness of your inside wheel goes extremely high. It's basically now only the whatever compliance you've got in the uh, suspension arms and the uh, stiffness of the tire itself. Uh, so your stiffness gets higher. So your roll sensitivity slope of this line is going to decrease. So let's just run our little animation here and see what happens. So that was kind of interesting. This sort of popped out into understeer. So what's happening here, I'll just slow it down a little bit, is you start off with our normal balance. Now we hit the droop limit and we go to understeer. So you can actually change the handling characteristics depending on uh, how um, high a G you're pulling with using your droop screws. So we really don't want to change that. We want to try and maintain this balance. So let's go and we'll set our rear droop be the same. Now you can see our kink has gotten or our dog legs got even more pronounced. That's because we've increased the stiffness of the rear suspension as well as the front. So let's go ahead and animate that. And now you see our bar graph stays very close to the uh, uh, neutral position. So we've maintained our balance. So Rule here is if you want to 
maintain your chassis balance and change the overall stiffness or responsiveness of your chassis. Whatever you do to the front, do to the rear. So to summarize here, uh, the responsiveness or overall stiffness of the chassis is controlled by your mechanical roll stiffness, which is made up of the spring rates, the anti-roll bars, and the shock angles. Uh, it's also controlled by your front and rear roll center heights, and lastly by the sprung mass center of gravity height. So the rule of thumb here is if you want to just change the overall responsiveness of your chassis and maintain the weight transfer balance, whatever you do to the front, do the same thing to the rear. Okay, and that's it for this episode, so stay tuned, and up next is Camber and Camber Game.